interestingly enough, I, I, I noticed that uh, I think that Mr. Stone King is with us. Aren't you there, Eric? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. What time is it there, Eric? Uh, it is 4.10 a.m. <laughs> so I think that this kind of uh, clearly sets the stage for the commitment that uh, these speakers have to our students. And uh, now that we know that NASA personnel wake up at 4 o'clock a.m., I don't want to hear any words from my students about having difficulty getting to class at 8 a.m. Because if he can do this, you can do better, right? So welcome, Eric. It's, it's delightful to see you here this morning with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm uh, right. interested to see uh, um, what folks have to say. Of course. Thank so, you for accepting our uh, invitation, Eric. I'm oh, very and, happy to. Uh, and just to uh, informally, uh, of course, Eric will be speaking at 1400 uh, at 2 p.m. here in Izmir time. From, he's from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. So welcome again. Um, I just will share for a few minutes something, uh, let's see, uh, less than 15 minutes. I would like to explain, especially to the students who are new to uh, the idea of free open source, so don't even know, in, part in particular to freshmen and uh, even prep school students or high school students, because I understand that we have a, a, about 30 high school students that will eventually join us here. So um, what, what I mean by free open source on our campus. Uh, and so in order to do that, I will share an app if I succeed at doing that. Uh, let me see here, here we go. So I'm gonna try, actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the screen and then I'm gonna go from the app and see if that is better. So, uh, is that visible? Can you see the free plane, the mind map? Yes, yes, okay. yes it's visible. Okay, great. So fundamentally, uh, this, uh, I, I know that, uh, uh, I think what, Eric, is, is, is that your, uh, your, your uh, motto that uh, F is equal to MA and all the rest is accounting, am I right? Yep. Yeah, yeah okay. I <laughs> I may have picked that up somewhere, but I forgot. Yeah. Where, so it's, it's mine now. So that's why that's why I, I when I wrote this uh, uh, this node as as they call it in my maps, I was thinking exactly about that uh, f equal to, to ma, because of course it comes from Newton's Principia Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica, and I, I wanna. I, 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 we should never forget why we are doing all of this because otherwise we get lost into the technicalities. But in reality, uh, the uh, Mr. Stone King, the developer of NASA 42, exactly, I guess, puts the focus on what matters, which is motion. That's what we are studying. However, a lot of these tools that you will see now appear to not have anything to do with that, although uh, they are designed to study motion. Uh, again, I am not referring here to my professional colleagues, but I am referring to students who may just be setting their feet into our department for the first time or even high school seniors in Izmir. So sometimes I hear, as the department chairman just said a moment ago, that you know I don't have money for licenses, so I don't have the tools to do research because my school doesn't have this or my school doesn't have that. So I would like to show to you that you have everything you need. And in fact, uh, all of my students who will be presenting here after me in just uh, 12 minutes will show you what they can do with free open source. So I would like to say, starting from the, uh, from the beginning, that uh, we have probably uh, a lot of numerical applications that you will hear about. Uh, and all of these nodes can be expanded to have more nodes. And all these lead to tools that are free open source, meaning that you can uh, download and uh, you know some of these papers, for instance, this will be this mind map will be de devoted to papers. So here, a lot of the knowledge is freely available. That's what I would like to say. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to uh, the map about the tools themselves, which is what I share with uh, my students when they start the semester with me. So I'm gonna go to this. Okay, so here we go. 
So as you can see here, we have a mind map recently created, updated, let's put it this way. So you can understand that in addition to the knowledge that I always share with you, uh, you have the software tools. So for instance, starting from something that we can all understand, modeling and simulation uh, for, um, spacecraft simulation, we have uh, OpenMCT, GMAT, uh, somewhere, I'm, I'm sure I have 42, which probably is listed here uh, under, I may put it under Linux, Linux only, although it's not true, right, Eric? I think that if, if you are good enough, you can put it under Windows 10, I think, right? Yes, um, you, it's sort of a cheat, you put it either you put it in some Linux-like environment, like Ubuntu or um, MinGW, but yeah. So uh, the, the, my mess, and of course, we look forward to your implementation there. Uh, something that I guess we need to introduce everybody to is the fact that when you use free open source, uh, the, the free part comes in two, in two pieces. One is the goodwill of a community of I would say hundreds of thousands of developers, such as Mr. King and others that we're gonna see here, but also the time that you decide to put into it because you need to implement that solution into your own computer. So my students know very well when you start using these tools for my classes that you need to put in the time. And uh, there is a support system that is very developed and very strong, but you need to reach out to the support, to, to the support system by, you know, for instance, internet. Uh, bulletin boards and stuff like that. So all of these tools are available, however. So what I'm trying to say is don't say that this is not, that you cannot do research for the simple reason that you cannot do stellar astrophysics that I'm gonna be teaching next semester. So you can go right on the internet and there are software tools that allow you to do a stellar model, including the evolution over 10 billion years, if that's what it takes. Uh, students can also do uh, image analysis. So we do a lot of that in uh, uh, remote sensing, for instance. So we do, uh, you know, manage the digital assets. So we process uh, these by extracting the appropriate information. So there are many of these tools that are maybe not necessarily NASA tools, although FITS Liberator, I think comes from NASA, but uh, all of these are widely used to extract information uh, uh, achieve, you know, acquire the CCDs and, and small telescopes. Video, what I mean here is uh, tools that are used mostly for planetary astronomy. And uh, of course, something else that students know very well is that we need to eventually communicate. And so my, the love of my life, that is LaTeX here, uh, available for free. If you install Linux, it, it, you cannot avoid it, but it's also available uh, in, uh, for instance, as in uh, MIGTEC or TechLive. Uh, most students use MIGTEC in my classes, but TechLive has come handy when MIGTEC mysteriously doesn't want to install. They are equally uh, successful, I think. So uh, there is then the whole issue of Jupiter that I will be discussing uh, briefly in the follow-up uh, when, when I present. Uh, not Jupiter with an I. Uh, it is a fantastic tool to, in, to basically write notebooks that were in, invented by um, uh, Steve Wolfram when he was at Caltech and he then later found Mathematica. Of course, Mathematica went its own way and it is now a paywalled program, but not many people know that uh, Steve Wolfram has made Mathematica free in the last two years. Uh, although it's not open source, it's become a free kernel that my students in fact have installed and used this semester. So we can integrate into Jupyter uh, any kind of kernel that we want along with uh, the LaTeX and Markdown information. So basically you can have a book that is alive. You can communicate this information and write down your results or present projects and stuff like that. So this is part, just part of the landscape, because if I want to, I don't know if I want to do this, but I could probably expand, uh, it would probably be scary to expand all the nodes. I'm not going to do it, because if I do that, the map becomes invisible. But we have all kinds of uh, resources that uh, people may want to have, uh, from plotting to CAD design. Uh, we have, of course, tools like, such as planetarium, programs that my students use even in 
general education programs that I teach uh, for, you know, like what we call physics for, for poets, basically. So Stellarium is a very successful planetarium program to plan observations to understand the sky, but it's very accurate. I mean, you can have, you know, magnitude 16 stars instead of Stellarium. So uh, we have done some good observations with small telescopes by using it. Uh, and then there are, you know, moon, the moon, I, I, all my students eventually had, had an experience on the virtual moon atlas that also integrates mass information and also from the Lunar and Planetary Observatory in Arizona. Uh, we have star catalogs of all kinds. We have calibration programs. Uh, so all of this is available to uh, everybody and uh, available uh, is probably too kind a word. What I mean is that you should be required to deal with this when you take my classes because uh, 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 can you, uh, Farouk, this, yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, I would like to also, uh, for those of you who are more into the aerodynamics uh, uh, area, discuss the fact that we have X-foil that actually I've seen used professionally for aerodynamics. And then there are other resources that students have and uh, uh, such as uh, um, managing uh, references, you know, typically they will be, they will mean Mendeley, stuff like that. So um, I think I have here notebooks actually, here we go. Yeah, so Jupiter, so in the Anaconda distribution. So uh, I know that GMAT has gone into also making itself available, available for Jupiter. I don't know if uh, 42 might in the future, if there is a plan to immerse it. In that. I can talk a little bit about that um, later if you like. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you so much. It, it just a, mm -hmm. I, I, I threw a question because I know that people are interested. And then finally, uh, something that also some of my students will discuss will be, uh, of course, when we communicate science, we also do that by means of uh, audiovisuals of all kinds. A lot, I, I'm surprised that I still hear people tell me I don't have Adobe uh, Photoshop or Illustrator. Well, at the level that you probably, unless you're producing a magazine in New York, uh, these tools are all you need and they're quite fine. Uh, I've always found that the students that spend the time are satisfied with it. That means learning how to use LaTeX because LaTeX is now immersed inside of Inkscape and diagrams. So you can definitely use it. For video, we have uh, all kinds of stuff. Again, this is OBS is being used today for, I mean, meaning at this workshop for recording. Uh, for modelers, so we have a lot of stuff. Uh, some of my students will talk about Blender that actually is used by, uh, we have seen it used in space research with the uh, people taking models out of, out of uh, CAD programs, immersing it into Blender, and then putting that into a simulation on, on the ground on Mars or something like that. So audio, of course, Audacity is the, the king of that. And then we have Scribus. Uh, I don't know if I should say Scribus, but Come, Scribus comes to me. And that is the, uh, if you want the alternative to Adobe InDesign and it does very well. Uh, a, a lot of the documents that you've seen for this workshop were prepared with Scribus. So, so this is, this uh, map, this my map is uh, available to the students on Blackboard. Uh, our our uh, guests may not know about that, but basically this is an internationally renowned platform for teaching. So we share these things on, uh, on Blackboard. And because it's about FOSS and freemium, I encourage everybody to just distribute it around and use this tool so there is nothing that has to be done other than using it. So, all right, so with that, I have two minutes before our, pro our group number one starts and I promised five minutes before I shut my mouth. So what we will do is do exactly that. We're gonna take a 60 second break uh, and then we're gonna listen to project one, if you guys can get ready. Uh, and uh, Eric and um, I'm gonna stop sharing and go back to the full screen here. Uh, I wanted to tell uh, Eric and I don't know if, if there is any other of the speakers if they are arriving, but uh, I would like to say that the students you're gonna hear speak next our final project students, so technically seniors. And that may mean fourth year, or if they are um, 
double major, they could be a fifth year student. Some of them going into graduate school next year, others, uh, you know, uh, joining a company or a profession or something like that. So uh, I'm gonna stop and I'll see you all in 60 seconds.